Hello, everybody. Welcome to It Was Tuesday with your host, James Chen, a.k.a. Jay Chenzor. Big weekend this past uh, past week. Uh, CEO 2024 took place, and CEO always one of the biggest tournaments uh, in the fighting game community, run by Mr. Alex Jabaley and a, a lot of his crew out there. Of course, now Tampa Never Sleeps, Tong, you know, and that whole crew do a lot of work there as well. Uh, but a lot of tournaments run over there, and uh, some very, very interesting results, actually, uh, that took place over there. Uh, again, I haven't had a chance to watch a lot of the matches, so I'm not going to have a lot of the storylines, etc., etc. Just kind of want to report a little bit on uh, the basically the big three. If you actually watch this tournament or oh, I'm um, watch this section over here the big three which is now Tekken Street Fighter 6 and Guilty Gear Strive because I, I think that's kind of the big three at this point and so if we actually take a look at these uh, here and you know this is also good opportunity here to advertise uh, the fighting game Liquipedia uh, Liquipedia which is run by Incross I mean he's just like I swear to God, he is just selflessly uh, updating this with as much information as possible. So shout outs to Incross, definitely one of the most uh, hardworking and important people in our community. It's so easy to find information about fighting games now uh, because of that. Um, so, oops, hang on a second. Let me take a look. Yep, that's the one. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> That's the one uh, to Halu. Uh, but uh, shout outs to Incross for all of this over here. And uh, as we see here, I mean, this is really cool because at this point in time, you know, it's clear with Tep uh, Tempest winning, you know, um, you know, Evo Japan recently and going really far at the Arxis World Tour. What was he, second place at Arc World Tour? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, let's see, Arc World Tour 2023 Finals. He was, uh... <laughs> oh, there it is. It's the graphic. I was looking at all the text and I avoided the graphic. Third, he was third at Arc World Tour. So that's what he was right there. But at this point in time, uh, I think uh, Tempest, Leffen, and Umi Show are like undoubtedly like three of the strongest players uh, in the Guilty Gear Strive scene, and it's really cool to see these guys repeatedly doing super, super well. And you know, at one point in time, we were all like, well, you know, they're not as good as the Asian countries or whatever, but you know, clearly that talk has all gone away. And you know, I'm not gonna say they're better, there's parity, it's very, very solid parity. And you know, it happens when you have a game with really good net code, right? I mean, when you have a game with really good net code, I'm telling you, man, it just grows a scene so much. People get to practice with each other. They get to improve. Uh, you see it in Street Fighter VI. A lot of the top players are playing with each other all the time, cross country, or maybe not even cross country, but like, you know, halfway across America and stuff. It's so important that these guys have the ability to play each other all the time. And, you know, uh, obviously it's a little harder for Leffen. He can't play the U.S. guys, but maybe he even does. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, it's really cool to see how much parity there is in the, uh, in the Strive scene right now where pretty much anyone from anywhere can take it at this point. So uh, really happy for Umi Show to be able to win this. Uh, I know her results uh, recently haven't been quite as crazy. I mean, yeah, you see right there, you know, she got uh, a fir a first at Lord Knight Masters Invitational and then at Frosty Faustings earlier this year. But outside of that, like at the Arc World uh, Tour Finals, she got tied fifth place over here, even at DreamHack Atlanta, getting all the way down to ninth place, et cetera, et cetera. You know, obviously I'm not saying her results have been bad, but clearly, you know, like this is a big win, I think for her. I think this is a really good big win and just kind of re-cements her back into that kind of uh, position. And yeah, you see uh, Death Metal uh, Diamond say, uh, 
yeah, didn't know about this site. Yeah, this is a wonderful, wonderful site. If you ever want to find it, just Google Liquipedia Fighting Games or Liquipedia FTC, and you will be sent there immediately because Liquipedia is a great site for all esports, for a lot of esports. And so if you actually go to like the main page, it's mostly going to be for all the other esports. But if you type FTC in particular, it takes you to the FTC homepage. And when you do searches and stuff, it only searches the FTC subsection of this wiki. So you will find a lot of information. You can find a lot of information about players and, and all these events out here. Really, really wonderful, wonderful site. Uh, but again, really happy for Umi Show. Um, Street Fighter VI, Punk. Punk taking it. And uh, he has gotten so many second places recently. <laughs> Uh, it's been crazy, dude. Like, I mean, the, uh, T, T, CEO never seen Tampa over Steve. Capcom Cup, last chance qualifier. Red Bull Kumite, he was third, fourth year. DreamHack, Dallas, he didn't do very well. You know, he's been having a, a little bit of a rough patch right here. But clearly, he's super good. And, you know, I, I'm, I am glad to see him with the Akuma now. Uh, Akuma, obviously a very strong character and requires a certain kind of pilot. Um, he has the ability to open people up, I think, better than Kami. And he's rewarded a lot more than Kami is. Uh, I have been on record saying that I think Kami's super strong this season. Uh, so I don't think it's necessary that Kami's weak. But I just feel like more that Akuma fits what Punk wants to do. I think Akuma fix it, uh, f f you know, does what he wants a little bit more. So I, I'm really happy to see him have this character. Obviously, he played all sorts of characters. As you can see here, he also has a Ken and a Kami. Uh, but if I'm not mistaken, Grand Finals and most of Top 8, it was mostly Akuma. But again, having that you know, slew of characters I think is really, really nice to have because you can give people different looks and such. And, you know, Akuma covers a lot of the bases that he wants from Kami, right? Because Akuma's not going to be any slower. <laughs> His foot speed is ridiculous. And so, you know, uh, he has the high damage output. He has a lot more uh, easier confirmations on stuff. He has a lot more combo routes. Uh, Kami is always going to be very, very fundamental and, you know, very strong because of the dive kick, right? But the dive kick obviously is a high read tool that can get you killed in, in bad situations. And I feel like Akuma might be a little bit more stable because Street Fighter VI has gotten to a point right now where the tiers are so compressed. Uh, I really don't think we can call them top tier characters, high tier characters. What I, The term that I've been using now is tournament stable characters, right? So when Big Bird dropped Marisa and went to Rashid, I don't think like he was abandoning a low tier character or whatever. Like Marisa's strong, but she's not a tournament stable character. And I think Akuma might be a little more tournament stable than Kami because while Kami has some of the best results, she's like the second or third highest used uh, character in the World Warrior top eights. So she's just a solid enough character that she'll always have a presence there. But you'll also notice that outside of people like Punk or Hurricane, and maybe even including Punk and Hurricane, their results shift wildly <laughs> because Kami is just that kind of character. She doesn't delete you. Kami does not delete you while Akuma can delete you. So Kami has that problem of she can hit you a bunch of times, but then another character can hit you, mix you once, and you die. And so that's a problem when you can't do it back to them. And so I feel like Akuma is a little bit more tournament stable than Kami because Kami doesn't have that deletion factor, uh, in my opinion. So uh, I do like the Akuma pick. I don't think he should drop Kami. He should absolutely hold on to Kami because she will be very useful in a lot of matches. But uh, really happy to see Punk uh, take this over DCQ. Uh, because Punk is already qualified for EWC, that means it dropped down. So it was only supposed to be first and second place qualified. But because uh, Punk already qualified, it dropped down to third place, which was Nephew. 
So good job to Nephew as well, doing it with the million dollar character, Jury. So he's been sticking with Jury. But even more importantly, again, DCQ with the JP. <laughs> So we did the World Warrior Spotlight this past weekend. Uh, first place in one of the European regions was a JP. Second place in another one of the European regions was a JP or third place. Another JP finished really high, basically. So everybody's saying that JP is like dead. Like, I, I don't know what you're, I don't know where you're coming from on that. Like, clearly this character is still very, very strong. And like I said, it's crazy because, you know, when I talk about a bottom five, I can't even talk about a bottom five. I don't think a bottom five exists in this game. Like, there's no five characters you could objectively all put into a bottom five. I think there's one character that I know is bottom five and another character that I would probably put there too. But uh, I don't know if you can logically put any other character there. Like, what would you do, put Lily there? Like, I think Lily is very scary right now. Uh, Jamie, maybe, but Jamie, I think, uh, <sighs> Jamie might be the third character that I would put down there, but you know, um, and Honda's the one that just confuses me because I know Honda's better than this, but he's the only one that you would logically put down there because his results have been extremely bad. So Honda might just be a character like Cammy in which he is solidly mid to high, but not stable, because it really just depends on how well your opponent is perfect pairing at the time. And so it's harder for Honda to be consistent. It's weird, because I think he's so good, but he just hasn't been doing well. But Idom in fourth place, <laughs> God, stop playing Manon. Uh, his, I mean, I heard he used JP against DC against Nephew, then uh, switched back to Manon and then got destroyed, unfortunately. Uh, NL and Just the Kid or Jack, uh, no other prodigy and Lex. I love how consistent Lex has been since that Evo Japan run. Like a lot of people probably saw that Evo Japan run and was like, wow, that was a fluke. He just had a really good day. But I'm really happy to see Lex continuing forward and doing well all the time. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, Street Fighter VI. Uh, another one I want to talk about is Tekken 8. This one, again, you know, I don't know the backstories. I don't know a ton about this. Um... I don't, obviously, I don't know the Tekken scene as much, though I wish, I, I really would love to learn more about it because I would love to play more and maybe even commentate more uh, for Tekken. But the main storyline that came out of this one, um, Lex is JB's brother, Grokthar. So uh, JB and Lex are brothers and, and Lex got, what was it, second place at EVO Japan? Second or third place at EVO Japan? So uh, that was his big breakout tournament. Uh, Evo Japan, he got third, he got third. But he's JB's brother, he's JB's brother. Um, huh, that's weird, the back button did. Oh, I should have hit the forward button, that's why. But the interesting story about this one, the main thing to come out of this really is, I mean, look at this, we got Pakistan, Japan, Japan, da, 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 the Philippines. UK, Korea, Japan, United Kingdom, UK, and Pakistan. So Pakistan had two representatives, UK had two representatives, Japan had two representatives, South Korea had one representative, and the Philippines had one representative. Where's the American players? This took place in Florida, dude, like, and uh, I saw some people tweeting about that, like, is America just having problems here? And what's actually kind of wild right now, um, you know, I talked about the Guilty Gear Strive thing where having the good net code is really, really helpful. Now, I personally haven't had too many terrible experiences with Tekken 8 net code. It's very good for not being pure rollback, right? Uh, I mean, I know there's some rollback in there or whatever, how it goes, but I really feel like, you know, by not having the same kind of net code that Strive and, and, and Street Fighter VI have, 
that it actually kind of hurts the U.S. scene. I might think it's harder for them to practice with each other. And again, I don't know well enough. I could be just completely talking about my, talking out of my ass and all the top players are like, we play each other just fine and it feels great every single time. Like maybe that is the case. I don't know. But like, I, I can't think of a reason why America is still having a little bit of a harder time over here. Cause you know, uh, clearly we have a lot of really strong players in the US, but having none of them make the top eight in, it, as CEO is kind of uh, is is like is that a wake up? Is that just something for the U.S. players to be like shit? We need to do better, or or, or what's going on? And yeah, I have Necromancy Black in the chat here, which is uh, really nice because obviously he knows the scene a little better uh, than I do. Um, yeah, for sure, Tekken, uh, Soul Calibur, big in the UK. Uh, you know, other players here, uh, other chat chatters like uh, Fish Tacos saying that this is kind of normal to have this happen. You know, but we've, uh, you know, I, I, there's another factor to it too. There's another factor that, you know, I'm ignoring here is that Tekken is really kind of the last legacy game. Right? All the other games that we've been talking about are all new versions now. We talked about Strive being a brand new version and how that's brought in a whole bunch of new players. And so we're all learning it at the same time. You know, Japan and Korea have always had the advantage in tech in, and even in past years, we wouldn't have even expected a US player to make top eight. We would have just been like, yeah, <laughs> whatever. You know, uh, there was no expectation. The fact that we can have that expectation and be sad that they didn't make it is a sign, theoretically, that US is improving by a lot. But the fact that it is a legacy game uh, makes it hard. And yeah, KOF, same thing, a legacy game. And you see that, right? Because the U US is not particularly strong at KOF either, right? Strongest regions are gonna be always uh, uh, China, Mexico, <laughs> Uh, Morocco, right? Like uh, a lot of other places. Uh, legacy games are, are, are hard to overcome decades of knowledge, right? You know, people can sit there and be like, oh, well, Street Fighter VI is not that different of a Street Fighter game. And as a person who's played through all of them, I will tell you that Street Fighter V and Street Fighter VI are, they're kind of in their own class, but they're so different. <laughs> than the original Street Fighter games, right? I'm not gonna say that they're different genres, they're, they're not even the, like, you know, a fireball's a fireball, right? But like, the, the way that the frame data and the input buffer have changed Street Fighter and Street Fighter V, it's a very different kind of game. And so, it is a different skill set, it's a different kind of, uh, it favors different kinds of players. Uh, both kinds of players can be good at either of the style of Street Fighter games, whether it is heart or mind, but you know, having it cater to one and being pretty different does allow for a new crop of players to show up. And I guess that just really hasn't happened with Tekken. You know, as much as everybody was like, oh my God, heat mechanic is gonna change everything so scrubby, all these people who don't deserve it are gonna start winning, and we haven't seen that at all. <laughs> We haven't seen that at all. Like, the same people are winning. Come on, let's let's be real here. So uh, I don't think you know that's that's a factor here. And so you know when I play Tekken Eight, you know yeah the heat mechanic shakes things up, but in the end it's still Tekken, right? So much of it is still fundamentally Tekken. Just like even though Street Fighter Five is different than Street Fighter Four, so much of it is still fundamentally Street Fighter. Like you play footsies, you don't want to jump that often, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know there's still a lot of very strong commonalities between them. And so I think that because Tekken is, but I mean, again, Tekken 8 is still more so legacy Tekken than Street Fighter 5 and 6 are legacy Street Fighter. So uh, I do think that Tekken is the most legacy game and that could be a factor as well. So it could be the net code. It could be the legacy factor. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but uh, you know, uh, Again, I'm not as part of the scene. I know maybe some Tekken players are gonna get mad at me. I'm like, what are you talking about? You don't know anything, James. But like, I would love to see, you know, the Tekken players. I, I, I would, you know, I, I would like to, 
I would like to sit in on a conversation with people who know and talk about their theories why U.S. is not doing as strong, basically is the, is the way uh, I would like to think. So, oh, for sure, Tekken 8 is the biggest shakeup. By, by far, by far the biggest shakeup, for sure. So, yeah, actually, it's a really good idea. I should bring Rip on here and just have a good talk with him and maybe to see what he has to say about that. So, of course, uh, the other tournament of note was the uh, winner of Mortal Kombat 1 who turned out to be the biggest loser of uh, the tournament as well. <laughs> oh boy. Oh man. Look, all I'm just gonna say was that uh, uh, Dylock won the tournament and as I tweeted to him, it was definitely a lights out performance from Dylock. So congratulations to him. He won uh, Mortal Kombat 1 at CEO. <laughs> oh, he said it wasn't. So in case you guys don't actually know, he popped off after getting into grand finals, threw a chair, and it broke a light. And uh, Jabaley was like, you're going to have to pay for it. So, uh, oh, so $192 in parts and $160 in labor. Total $352 plus tax equals $365 and 44 cents. So Dialog still came out in the green. <laughs> he came out in the green. <laughs> he got just as much as second place. Let's go. So there you go. Oh man, unfortunate situation. So uh, unfortunate situation. Uh, but yeah, don't throw chairs. Don't try to hungry box, dude. <laughs> Cause the thing about it is like he tried to get all excited. He looked like he was like, should I throw the chair? Should I not throw the chair? Should I pop off? And then he threw it and it hit something. And that just took the entire wind out of his sails for that pop off. And uh, I felt really bad, but yeah. Don't throw chairs, man. <laughs> Don't throw chairs. Yeah, I mean, it probably costs a lot more to even go to the tournament, so. Uh, but yeah, that, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover here. Uh, a lot of the other tournaments there, obviously CEO runs a bunch of tournaments. Uh, but the biggest news, of course, that came out of CEO is that they are officially moving back uh, to Orlando next year. Finally, uh, Jabali is able to get away from Daytona and uh, here's the trailer here for this. And as I said to Dasset Bro on Twitter, he said, oh, I think I might be back. I was like, yeah, I'm thinking I might be back. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, it's a joke. He likes to troll people. Alex's intelligence. So, um, John the Automaton, the Wyndham Resort wasn't big enough to run CEO, so he found a venue in Daytona, signed a multi-year contract with them. Turned out Daytona sucked, <laughs> but he was stuck there. <laughs> and now finally this Welcome year, uh, I think the contract ended and such. So here we go. I mean, honestly, going from um, Getting to Daytona was even more expensive than because you couldn't like it was hard to fly directly into Daytona. Yeah, they got out of the contract early. I don't know how they got the shot, by the way. Welcome to CEO's new home. Thank goodness we are back in Orlando. Thrilled about that. Uh, and uh, yeah, time to go back to Orlando. It's gonna be a good time. That venue looks absolutely ginormous. Looks like there's gonna be a lot of cool things there, a lot of nice amenities and stuff. So it's gonna be exciting. Uh, I'm sure we are gonna to have to expect a price increase because that's what happens when you get bigger, nicer venues. Uh, that's what happens, but hopefully, uh, yeah, we can get international players there again. So yeah, but uh, really happy to see CEO returning to Orlando, so. Shout outs to Jabaley, shout outs to that entire team. Uh, it's gonna be at the Rosen Shingle Creek is what it's called. The Rosen Shingle Creek. Uh, our grandest venue yet is close to the airport, the amusement parks, and everything you'll need 
for this to be our biggest, our best fighting game event experience ever. And again, you know, the people not going to CEO these past few years, it has nothing to do with CEO. CEO has always been a very well run tournament, a fantastically run tournament. Jabali always puts on a good show and everything like that. It's just really, it's just the city. It was just Daytona that was the problem. And now that it's not at Daytona, I think it's going to be, uh, uh, and yes, and uh, CEO Taku is merging with, what is it, was it Holiday Matsuri or was it, um, I think it was Holiday Matsuri, wasn't it? Uh, but yes, Florida is just expensive because it's a vacation spot. It's a vacation spot, right? So, and uh, it's an expensive vacation spot. Like as, much, as expensive as Evo can be, you know, Vegas subsidizes airplane costs and stuff like that because they want you to fly to Vegas because they want you to spend your money in the casinos. They don't want to make getting Vegas too expensive. They don't want make getting to Vegas expensive because they want you to spend all the money while you're at Vegas. So, you know, um, but yeah, it's going to be cool to, to have that return. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully I'll be back at uh, CEO next year. I haven't gone the last two years. Um, uh, largely, honestly, because uh, it's just hard to make it to events these days. Uh, but also because, you know, it was in Daytona, so the drive to go <laughs> wasn't that high for me, unfortunately. And again, uh, Jabali knows, like he knows, he knows all the situation. And I told him, I was like, don't worry, like, I don't think CEO's reputation is hurt. I think everybody knows that CEO is a good tournament, just in a bad place. So once they get back to Orlando, I think CEO will definitely be popping off again. Uh, so I'm really excited for that. So, uh, all right then. That was CEO this past weekend. Uh, a lot of cool stuff happening over there. So um, again, events happening all the time. So make sure you keep an eye on everything that's going on. I'm gonna try to watch some of the CEO top eight for Street Fighter VI on my own stream, just so I can watch and see what happened and watch Punk's Akuma a little bit more and see if my assessment is correct about you know him being able to delete people a little easier and stuff. Uh, so keep an eye on twitch.tv slash jchenzor uh, for when that goes live and I actually review those matches. Uh, but until then, thank you guys for watching and uh, for those of you here on Twitch, uh, we'll see if I get to this again because I've been streaming for three and a half hours <laughs> and uh, we will see you soon. But for those of you on YouTube, the day that this podcast graced your ears was the most important day of your life, but for me. It was Tuesday. <laughs>